Well, today on Nation, the Small Business Service Industry Podcast, longest title ever, thanks to some UK guys, we're talking about the top five small business truths. So if you are a small business owner, do stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? Hey, if it's your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully, it doesn't suck, or at least sucks just a little bit. Listen to all the episodes. Uh, watch them on YouTube if you want. But if you're a podcast listener, they're literally everywhere. Podcasts are uh, 20 times more people listen than watch the videos. So if you want to talk and give me awesome comments... Uh, good or bad, just any kind of comments. And by the way, on YouTube, if you go to YouTube, you search WCR Nation, it'll pull up the, the most recent one, this one, top five uh, small business truths. Comments, put something. Ryan Fuster just gives like the thumbs up. I don't even know if he watches, but he gives a thumbs up. And that helps me. And uh, there's guys from the UK that just say, UK, drop it. Just say something. But if it's your first time, have a look around. I am a sales rep with windowcleaner.com. I am as impartial as I possibly can be, but I am going to tell you truths that I think uh, on the other side. So if you need any help with supplies, that's what I'm here for. Uh, please do give me a call or shoot me a text, 862-312-2026. A lot of you, a lot of you, let me put all your orders in, which is absolutely, absolutely amazing. I do see sometimes names will sneak through and be like, hey, they didn't let me put that in. So to all of you who let me put every single order in, thank you so much. It is because of you that I get to have haircuts the day of recording so that I look, you know, tolerable on camera. I have a face for radio. That's all I know. I'm no Steve-O. <laughs> Which, by the way, I'm actually recording with Steve-O next week, so that'll be pretty exciting. Anyway, a couple shout-outs for you today. I want to say what's up to Dave Slippy, Miles Ger Gershield, Ryan Krakow, David Rodriguez, the man. He's an OG, by the way. Uh, Andrew Barrick, Michael Cruz, Joseph Krebs, Keith Erlis, Bo and Jemmy, and there's a ton more. Uh, I just pulled off... Um, uh, just a, a few hours of, of orders. Uh, thank you guys. Thank you so stinking much. And every week I'm going to give a shout out to people who order from me. So there you go. Um, but this week we are talking about the five small business truths. Let me touch on two things real quick. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, on the back wall, every time we get new stickers in, uh, you're going to see them. Uh, but there is the hard body karate sticker, which is hard to do backwards. Oh my gosh. And then uh, the dinosaur with water fed is on there. Plus, some black diamond stickers just came on the board. So, super awesome. By the way, if you haven't subscribed to the magazine, do that. Uh, American Window Cleaner Magazine. The post office is the worst thing I've ever dealt with ever. Magazines were shipped out on the 15th of last month. So, it's like almost a month they've had them. February's issue is already in the mail. That's how behind they allegedly are. So we're trying to work on that, but uh, thanks for your patience on that. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, uh, awcmag.com. Okay, Whew. all that out of the way. I'm going to talk about some real truths in small business. Now, a lot of the times when we talk about something like truths and like things that, uh, you know, versus opinions, I get emails and comments and everything else. So don't hesitate to ever do that. Um, but it is very, very, uh, important to kind of let people know, especially if you're new or especially if you've been in business for a while and you're focused on the wrong things. Uh, twice a year, I take the blinders off and just like, look at everything. I bring other people in who aren't even in the industry. I talk to people who have no idea what I do. Uh, and I get these fresh opinions. And the reason to get the fresh opinions is because eventually you think that what you know, because you've been doing it so long is absolute truth. And there's a lot of things that kind of fall to the wayside that people forget. That people forget. If I don't mention one of yours, uh, comment down below on Facebook uh, or YouTube, whatever I'm trying to say. But the number five truth to small business is that people want to be told. They don't want to be asked. Now, let me tell you something separate. Now, if you are new to business and you haven't taken the blinders off, you go, well, no. 
uh, you're supposed to ask people what they want and then do what they what they say. Right, you need to listen, but they need to be told, not asked. And I'll give you an example. If you go into a location, uh, say you're doing a route job, you go into a location and you say, uh, hey, I was just wondering if I could give you a bid on Windows. They could say no. If you say, oh, they say, yes, go ahead, give us a bit. Okay, great. Uh, did you want inside and outside? They could say no. Uh, uh, did you want to do it weekly or did you want to do it every two weeks? Uh, or did you want to do it monthly? How about quarterly? I don't know, quarterly, I guess. We'll see where your price comes, right? There's so many things you're asking. If you walk in and on your way in, you write down the name of the company on your sheet, you put in your inside and outside bid, you put your outside only bid, you put everything on there with your number, you walk up and go, hey, my name is Jersey from XYZ Window Cleaning. I just wanted to drop off a bid. We're in the area. We do this place, this place, this place, and this place, all up the street, and we'd love to get you on the schedule. Here's my information, and here is a bid for you. I just passed all of those opportunities for somebody to say no, right? If you're at a house and the homeowner is going, um, are you going to be doing uh, the second floor or the first floor? Oh, I don't, I don't know. Which one do you want me to start on? I, I don't care. Like they're looking for you to be the professional. They're looking to be told. So here's how that works. When somebody asks you a question, you tell them the answer because you're the professional. You are the professional. You're the reason that they hired you. You're the reason they pay for that. They're, I'm hiring a window cleaner because he knows everything about window cleaning. He knows what he's doing. He's going to control a situation. That's why I hired him, right? If you're asking them and you're trying, well, what should we, and you're not there, you know, what, what about this? What, uh, what's best to do inside and outside or are you going to do, I don't know, should I do the sills first? Like no one's hiring you for your expertise if you are not telling them your expertise, Somebody says, oh, so how do you? How does all this go? Well, great. We start on the second floor. We're going to do the inside and outside at the exact same time and try to work with an uh, outside guy and an inside guy. That way that if we miss anything, we can see it instantly and we can show each other and uh, get all the windows done. We're going to work that way and then we'll finish here in the front hall where I'll talk to you afterwards and tell you everything, how it all went, and we'll go from there. Telling somebody, like, oh, great, okay, guy's got it under control, right? This is why we paid him. He has the situation under control. People don't want to be asked. They want to be told. Well, wh what, what, uh, what should I do? Should I, uh, should I uh, get that house power washed? Oh, I don't know. I mean, what do you think? Do you think you should pressure wash the house? I mean, would you like that? Well, I mean, I, I don't know. Right? Being told as a customer, and I'm not talking about being a, a, a D-bag. No one's saying that. But being the professional and being the one that is telling somebody something, it works that way. If you go to a car dealer and you're buying a car and the guy's like, I, I don't know, I mean, do you want like navigation or, right? You can ask simple questions. That's how you get to the truths. But not being telling, oh, you, you want navigation in your car. It's going to be this, this, and this. So much better than not having it and running your phone. You don't ever have to worry about your phone. It's always there. It automatically updates. Here's the Bluetooth options that come with that. Oh, okay, this guy knows his stuff, right? Building trust in business is why people buy. If they have trust in you, they buy. If they're happy with the price, they buy. You have to have a combination of everything. If you don't agree with me, tell me. But that's the, the number one, number five truth. Is people want to be told, not asked. A number four on the top five small business truths is people don't focus on the price. Now, I know that there's some of you out there who are like, you are a moron. And I've been told that. <laughs> if you want to tell me that, go ahead and comment on YouTube. That's fine. But um, I am truly sincere when I say this. Now, focused on price means that they are looking specifically at price. There will always be somebody who doesn't care who you are, what you offer. They just want to be cheap. I get that. That does happen. But for the majority of people, they don't focus on price. Price is not their number one thing. And if you think it is, it's because you haven't explained what or why. 
right? We always talk about this. You need to know your why. That's your USP. If you have your why explained and under control and know exactly who you are and why you are the best, you can convey that information. People aren't necessarily focused on the price. Now, not being focused doesn't mean they're not looking at it at all. If you say, oh, you got six windows in your house, you go over your whole spiel and say, oh, it'll be $30,000, whoa. Well, now all of a sudden you just drew the focus to price, right? So if you're semi-competitive, even if you're on the high end, that's fine. But people aren't as focused on the price as you think. Now, the way that you take this into consideration in business, any small business, it doesn't matter if you're doing lawn care all the way through window cleaning, right? But the way that you take that into consideration is that it should not be your focus. Now, you're going to be pretty close to where others are. You may be on the high end. You may not be. And by the way, I'm going to jump off script, if you will, for just a second. But almost everybody I've ever talked to ever says, well, I'm not the cheapest. I'm not the cheapest. So everybody has an idea of where they are price-wise. That being said, people don't buy from us sometimes because we're not the cheapest, right? (laughs) So it is, you know, it is, you cannot get 100% of the people all the time. And I can tell you that much. I've spent hours on the phone with people and at the end they're like, oh, I found this for uh, $52 cheaper over here. It's like, uh, okay, well, that's like 3%, 1%, uh, probably even less than that, of your entire, you know, order. But anyway, sometimes people, you just can't get them because they are on price, but not always. Now, here's the thing. Take that price. A lot of times people go, well, I got to have a sale. I got to have a coupon that that shows, uh, if you book with me, I'll give you $50 off. If you do this, I'll I'll do this price. And people will focus all the way on that. I know that because people buy uh, templates from us and they'll be like, oh, I got to put, what kind of coupon should I put on there? I got to put a coupon that really gets them, that really gets people in the door. They have to buy because they see this and they're like, oh, I got to buy with the, here is the thing. If you focus on price, you're selling the wrong side of your business. You're selling the wrong side of your business. We're a luxury business. We are a luxury business. The price is not what you think the price is. There's so much more that goes into business or our businesses than price. And I'm going to touch on it a little bit later, but price is not the focus. Now, if you change that, if you go with a Groupon, Groupon focuses on price. Every single thing that's ever gone through Groupon is discounted if they're actually doing a discount or not that's a different story but everything they do is discounted so that means that every single person who buys groupon is only there to get a discount they're gonna get a deal i gotta get a financial deal right no one ever goes well, i know i'm gonna find an awesome thing on on groupon uh, maybe i'll pay full price but it'll be great no one says that because their focus is price it's like uh, service magic, home advisor. Sorry, I'm old school still. Home advisor's big thing is they're going to get you a bunch of people. And yes, it's to get the best feel. It's to, to understand companies. But the main thing is, is that if you can get people competing against each other and you got three people standing in line with something they haven't explained necessarily what it is, so simplistically that if you have a base model Chevy 1500, Same color, same trim, same everything from three different people selling it. They don't explain the dealership. They don't explain what they offer. They don't tell you why you should buy from them. It's literally the same thing on three different fronts. You're going to buy on price. If it's the same, everybody's selling the exact same thing, you're going to focus on price because then that's the only variable. But if everybody's selling something different, Meaning you sell uh, your window cleaning, but you also have a white glove treatment, 20 day rain guarantee and 100% satisfaction guarantee. And you, uh, you know, have a uh, 120% money back guarantee. And, you know, when your techs show up, they are all level. They are all trained and have photo IDs. Every outfit, you'll never see anybody with stains or, you know, whatever you're doing to set up 
your company. It's more than price. It's more than price. So people are not focused on price as much as you are. So when you go, and let me tell you, I will always put pricing on my marketing material. I'll always do that. And the reason is, is because tire kickers take up time. Tire kickers take up time. If somebody doesn't know the price, A, if you're selling a car, you know, like a Facebook marketplace, you're selling something that says call for price, I'm never going to call you. Not ever, never, never. If you're too selfish to put prices out there, I'm not going to call you because I already know what kind of person I'm dealing with. Put a price out there. I want to know if it's in the ballpark so that I can find the other reasons to buy, right? So I'll always put prices on there. 20 windows, 199 right? Roof wash, you know, 2,000 square foot house, roof wash, $4.99, whatever you put on there. Now, if you're specific in that, I just said that a 2,000 square foot house roof wash is $4.99. I have to honor that. But if your house is 2,500 square foot, then it's a different price. But they're getting the ballpark because a lot of times people don't know how much things cost in general. So the price is important, but it's not something they focus on. It's something that they just use or understand, right? Don't focus on price yourself. Focus on you. Why are they buying you? Not the price. And that'll change every way that you you advertise. Uh, You're starting to speak to them on their terms, but you're also letting them know the focus isn't there even if they're still looking at it. The number three, uh, top five small business truths is that people will tell you what they want solved. Now, a transaction happens when you relieve a pain point. You relieve a pain point or create a pleasure point, right? Those are the reasons people buy. They either, in our case, are relieving a pain point. I hate cleaning windows. I hate doing gutters. I mean, I don't even want to Hey, guess what? We'll take care of it. We're going to scoop, bag, and remove all the debris out of your gutters. You'll never even see it or, more importantly, smell it. We're going to take it all back with us. Everything will flow perfectly. You're not going to have any issues with those gutters once we're done. Right? The person's pain point by saying, I hate gutters. Ugh. You go, okay. So what they're saying is they don't like gutters. They don't like to do the gutters. Gutters gross them out. Everything about it. If you let someone talk long enough in a sales situation, they will tell you everything you need to know. And I've talked about this before, but here's a really, really, really big fail on a lot of business owners' parts. They're so in-depth in what they know or think they know. Oh, man, I'm the cheapest. You know, I'm still focused on that price because I don't listen to Jersey. Um <laughs> which I'm just a guy with the mic. I'm nobody. I'm not anybody special, but some of these actually do make sense. But a lot of times they'll focus on that, that no matter what, that last company, they're they're there and they're just waiting for their turn to talk. They're not listening. I mean, I got to tell them about how cheap I am and uh, discounts. Yeah, I got it. And the other person, the customer is like, yeah, no, uh, you know, we have a company now. Uh, they've been doing our windows for, gosh, 20 years. You know, it's been a really, really long time. You know, we, we know the guy really, really well. Uh, uh, he just he doesn't always show up on time, you know, when, when, we, when we have him. You know, we've had him for 20 years, and I can't tell you if he ever made it on the same day of the week. It's just, you know, he's just never there. Uh, but, you know, he does, he does good work. Uh, and, you know, we've known him. He's known the boss forever. It's, and they could talk. In that whole conversation, if they're all stop, you go, yeah, yeah, well, you know, we are the cheapest in town. They're going to go, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, no, I don't, I don't even know what they charge. So, well, look it up. You should see. We're going to, we'll be able to beat their price. All right. Well, no, you know, we're good. Their pain point isn't price. They never mentioned price. They never once mentioned price because it didn't matter to them. What did they mention? What did the person actually say? Here's that corny thing that you've probably heard, but you have one mouth, two ears, listen twice as much as you talk, right? Now, if somebody says something along the lines that they didn't show up, but I didn't know, you know, kind of jokes, they say, absolutely. The first thing that's coming out of my mouth is, well, I love that you've had them for so long. We love, you know, loyalty. We have a lot of people on our side that are, are just really, really loyal. Um, one thing about our company is that we are reliable. 
that is our main focus. This is what we do. Every single crew that we run route, they are on a day-to-day -day schedule, meaning that every week it's the same structure as the following week. If they get snowed out or rained out, that may move in that week, but you will never move places in your week. We are as reliable as they can come. Now, most people would keep going, oh, we're the cheapest. You know, we can give you discounts and uh, 20 bucks, I'll do it. That's not their focus. So even bringing that up just waters down your service. Their big pain point and what they said was that the other guy didn't come. They mentioned it because it mattered. Even if they laughed at it when they said it, oh, the boss knows him, so I guess maybe he knows he doesn't have to come every you know regular. They still said it because it came up. It's They were said it because it was in their brain. People say what's in their brain. Listen to what they say. And you will realize how to sell them, how to talk to them. People want, uh, they will tell you what they want solved. They'll tell you their pain points, even if they don't just come out and go, my number one concern is this. Talk to somebody, listen to them, and they will tell you everything you ever need to know. Two ears, one mouth. Remember. Number two on the list, the top five small business truths are people complain because their expectations aren't met. They don't complain for any other reason. The people are like, well, yeah, I, uh, yeah, uh, my competition, they are horrible to talk with on the phone. More people complain about them than they do write good reviews, and it's all the same thing. This guy's a jerk. This guy's... Exactly. That's what they complained about. But people only complain when their expectations aren't met. Here's something. If you go into Disney, Disney... For Bobby Walker fans, you've probably seen Disney. If you go to Disney, it costs a ridiculous amount of money for any of the parks. But as soon as you drive in the gate, there is not one speck of garbage, one spot of rust, one flick of dirt. It is the cleanest place on earth. Because uh, Walt Disney said, and I'm totally, totally quote misphrasing this, but he said something along this line that there is no dirt or debris, or litter in a fantasy. And we are selling the fantasy. Right? So, when somebody's expectations are met for what they build up in their head, they don't complain. You could be more expensive than any company ever, anywhere around, but you were so amazing to, be, to deal with that their expectations were just blown away. Right? I have won bids. I have won bids. I couldn't tell you I couldn't count them on my fingers and toes. How many bids I won were the guy or girl who I was talking to said, you know, you were way out of the ballpark price-wise, but I got talking to you. I mean, I've not dealt with a person like you. You know, you just seem like a really awesome guy. I know this is going to be an amazing relationship. So I hired you. Then I focused on price. Back to the last one. But they are focused on their expectations. My expectations that the window is going to be clean. My expectations is you're not going to charge me $40,000. My expectations is that you guys are going to be pretty nice. Nice to deal with. I'm letting you in my house, right? Those are the expectations. If you give them service above that, if you are absolutely amazing to deal with, the nicest guy they've ever dealt with, right? All of your equipment was spot free, clean, and new. Wow, these guys have the newest, freshest stuff. Their trucks look amazing. Remember, it doesn't matter how old your vehicle is if it looks nice. I just saw something on Facebook. Some guy just completely repainted one of his old trucks. It looked like uh, maybe like a 2000s-ish era truck, like a 2005 or something. And he just painted it all. All nice. The tires are dressed. The rims are shiny. The thing is clean. Brand new vinyl. High five. You're going to show up in a nice car. You're going to have the nice clothes on. You're not going to smell like an ashtray or a dirty gutter. Right, you're going to be super personable. Everything is professional as far as paperwork goes and and documents and photos and everything. The whole experience is just amazing. They're not complaining. When something gets broken, well, I didn't expect them to break anything. They complain. You know, they came and uh, the one guy, I don't know what was up his butt. I had mentioned one of these windows and he just kind of like blew up at me. They complained. Their expectation wasn't to get 
yelled at by a tech that they hired. Their expectation wasn't to have streaks on a window. Their expectation wasn't fill in the blank. That's why they complain. An expectation was not met. If you can give them what they expect, if not more, then you will not ever get complaints. Now, I've had, I've given people everything they possibly could, and then all of a sudden they throw something back at me, and I'm like, you know, at this point, I don't even, I'll give you a fun little example. Grab some popcorn. We had a customer I loved. She was so nice, very, 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 gosh, very talkative, but very nice, and her husband was uh, off his rocker, maybe. He was getting to the age where the IDGAF, he just didn't care any longer. And literally, one time our crews go in and they knock on the door, they're talking to her, and they hear yelling in the background something about uh, bath or bathing or something like that, and they just keep talking to a lady. We've known her forever, we've done the job for what, anyway. He comes up to the top of the landing, right in front of everybody, completely buck naked. And he says to the guys, he says, where's the nurse? I need my bath. And he's standing there. Which, by the way, I'm pretty sure he could have done it himself. I don't know what was going on. But his nurse was running late. He's standing butt naked at the top of the thing. Uh, Both of the techs are like, oh, gosh, uh, okay, sorry, we're going to go wait to the truck. And he's like, I don't care if they see my... And starts using expletives. And if you want to look, take a picture. You know, put that. So the guy is naked. She is embarrassed because he's just having some kind of weird conniption thing. Uh, The nurse isn't there. The guy said, you know what? It's just not a good time for us to come in the house. Uh, We don't want to go in there. He said some other stuff about if they come upstairs, you know, uh, I have a shotgun or something along those lines, which he's loony, but he was saying it kind of like a passive aggressive, but not like I'm going to kill. He just, they removed themselves from the, the thing. I showed up, they called me. I talked to her. He was fine. The nurse had come in between the two things. Uh, he had gotten his morning pills and everything else and he was fine. He apologized, um, or, uh, she apologized for his behavior and everything was fine. Two days later, Two days later, I have a negative review from him, from the guy who was naked, yelling and talking about, you know, shooting my employees and everything else is that they didn't care the troubles that he was going through in his personal life and they just wanted to push their way in even when he wasn't ready. That's how it all was worded. That that we wanted to clean the windows on the time of day that they set up and the date that they set up, we wanted to clean the windows even though his nurse wasn't there and it really inconvenienced him, the guy who was naked yelling at us. So his expectations weren't met. We did a great job. She was embarrassed and mortified. He was on the other side of it. Like, ah, things didn't just happen. They should, have, they should have seen that I was there. And then as soon as I made those comments, they should have said, you know what, we're going to reschedule. There's obviously not the right day. His expectation of them hearing what he was saying, rescheduling the whole thing, I showed up and kept the schedule, talked with her. His expectation wasn't met. So he was in completely in the wrong. Uh, we should have never, ever gone back there again. We only did outsides on that property for the rest of our time. But he complained because of that. So keep that in mind. People complain because their expectations aren't met. And the number one small business truth, this is a hard one again with everything we've talked about. We sell an experience. Everything you buy as a luxury is an experience, not a service. So with that being said, if you're stuck on price, it's because you're not thinking we're a luxury. When does Ferrari go on sale? What's the, uh, you know, they have like a Toyota-thon? When's Lamborghini-thon? There are none. Where are these commercials? There are none. They're not focused on that. It's an experience. You walk in, they hand you champagne, they say, hey, come look at our stuff. You buy Apple products. Not because you need a computer. If you're just looking for the cheapest computer that works, you go to Walmart and buy some, you know, weird brand you've never heard of. When you buy an Apple, the packaging, the Apple comes in is absolutely amazing. The feel, it's a velvet box. It's a velvety feel box. It's rubberized. How does that work? There's no seams. Look at an Apple box. 
for an iPhone, look at an Apple box for an iPad or iMac or anything, any of the portable devices, there are no seams on the box. They make it that way. It's an experience. You open it up and guess what? Every single piece that's in there, your mouse, your keyboard, your screen, your backplate, your logo, everything has a, a piece of plastic on it that you get to go and pull off. Not because it's protecting anything. Man, your computer's in a box. There's no reason for that. You want to put it on a screen so the screen doesn't get smudged up or scratched? Okay. It's a laptop. It's closed. Why they put that on there is because the experience of getting the product Opening the product, unpackaging the product is part of the experience. You're selling an experience, not a service. So give them an awesome experience in how you handle things, how you talk to them, how they buy, what services you provide, how you look, how you show up on time. The information you give them, the documents, everything. You create an experience. Create an experience that they will be blown away. If you create an amazing experience, you're going to beat their expectations. They're not going to focus on price. And you just told them all the services that you want. Everything's been solved. They're extremely happy. They've been happy with the experience. No one dies if you don't clean their windows. No one dies if they have algae on their siding. It's an experience. Make an experience and you'll succeed in business. I'm telling you. If you want help ordering supplies or help in any type of business, I truly, truly mean this. Give me a call, 862-312-2026. Call me, but more importantly, text me because I'm on the phone all day. That's what I do. Uh, as you hear when I record, my phone rings all the time. I should mute stuff, but I have phones all over. But, <laughs> but shoot me a text. Be like, yo, Jersey, everything's in my cart, and I will put the order in for you. It's like a virtual high five of awesomeness, and I get to buy gas for my car. So thank you so stinking much. 862-312-2026. Also, if you haven't, check out American Window Cleaner Magazine. It is uh, awesome. At least that's what I think. Two issues are out. Uh, zero issues have been delivered. But they are there. It is, uh, they're in the mail as soon as post office gets back on things. Uh, or we change how uh, things are sent. It's going to be way, way more awesome. But stick with it. Get a subscription. And until next week, go out there and be epic.